Today we're going to show you a standard Windows Mobile based smartphone that you can buy at any store today uh, in any city. The capabilities of these phones obviously are very impressive and the thing we're going to show you is that certain capabilities of the phone can be modified very quickly with just a small amount of code. So what we're going to do today is actually insert a little bit of malware in the device. This malware could have been picked up on an email attachment that you clicked on from a website or from a removable media, in this case an SD card. Today we're going to insert an SD card just for simplicity's sake to show you how easy it would be and how quickly that software can load. You'll briefly see the, the screen flicker. And now the code's inserted. It was that fast. I'll go to the home page, but the home page is no longer set for the standard carrier's home page. Now when we go to the home page, we're basically greeted with uh, Jay Leno. Now this is a very simple test of showing how we could do a simple modification to the device from a phone. The second class of attacks that we'll show today will actually allow us to remotely control the device. Uh, in this case, we have two specific attacks that we'll show. The first attack in which we put a phone literally on the table, there will be no one touching the phone, we can remotely launch Internet Explorer and take you to any number of web pages. Now on its face, this is fairly simple and fairly visible, but what this really allows me to do is it allows me to take you to any web page. I could, for example, take you to my web page that had additional malicious code on it. Uh, this would be very simple for us to do and can be run across virtually any network in the world. So the second attack that we'll show you for remotely controlling the device actually allows us to launch the dialer. And in this case, we'll be able to dial up uh, any number of numbers. In this case, we're going to just specifically dial up our own um, phone number that we have, uh, that we've set up for this demo. Record your message at the tone. The third type of attack that we'll be doing today will actually be stealing information. There's a number of ways that we can actually steal information from a device. The first one that we'll show is a simple phishing attack. It's based on a, a pop-up window that will occur on the device in which we solicit you to call a specific number with your credit card information. Due to the nature of the pop-up, it doesn't appear as if it is generated by the operating system or as a normal course of events a, a pop-up that you would see. It looks much more official as if it's coming from your carrier. And that's the threat on that, is that your phone service will be discontinued if you don't call up this number. The second type of attack will actually be able to redirect and capture your SMS text messages. As they're sent to you by another person, those messages will actually be redirected. They'll be co you'll be able to read them, but they'll be copied onto another user, and a third party will be able to see all your SMS messages. We can leave this running indefinitely so that every SMS message that reaches your phone actually is copied and then sent along to a third party who can then literally monitor your entire conversations with others via text message. In our third demonstration of stealing information from a smartphone, I'll actually create a Word document, and then my helper over here, Adam, will actually steal the document from me. We're going to create a quick Word document here. And now as you watch, this document will be stolen before your very eyes. First Adam will actually copy the document without deleting it to his notebook so that he can view it. And then the second thing Adam will do will actually be to delete this file from this device. So in a world in which we're all getting a lot more dependent on mobile web, mobile messaging, mobile content, and mobile applications, we need to understand there are vulnerabilities associated with these devices. Certainly these vulnerabilities can be mitigated with the use of other software applications, but we just need to be cognizant of the things that are happening. Identity theft is no longer purely an issue for notebooks and desktops. It's actually an issue for your mobile device usage as well. So good luck in all your usages and uh, be safe.